Hi biologists, let's start by looking at the learning objectives for this lesson. At the end of this section and following the biology syllabus, you should be able to distinguish between dicotinedons and monocotinedons in terms of whether they are woody or herbaceous, arrangement of floral parts, arrangement of vascular bundles, cotinedon or seed leaf number. What does this actually mean? What are we trying to understand? Well, you have to be able to distinguish between dicotinedonous and monocotinedonous plants, focusing on the differences between their stems, whether they are woody or herbaceous, the arrangement of their flower parts, the arrangement of their vascular bundles, and the number of seed leaves that they have. Let's try to understand the organization of the parts of the flowering plant by looking at monocots and dicots. Flowering plants or angiosperms. Be careful not to call them flowers. Flowers are individual blooms that you put in a vase. Flowering plants are quite another story. Do not use the two words interchangeably. Flowering plants are plants that produce flowers, seeds or fruit. Examples of flowering plants are angiosperms, are grasses. Yes, grasses produce flowers. Small plants that we are familiar with, dandelions, daisies and buttercups, are also examples of angiosperms. But careful here, do not include mosses and ferns. Mosses and ferns are not flowering plants. They are not angiosperms. They belong to another group. Most trees are angiosperms or flowering plants, not conifers. Conifers are trees like pine trees or Christmas trees. They belong again to another group called gymnosperms. Lastly, most shrubs that you would see in the garden or bushes like firs or gorse bushes, if you're familiar with them, they are also flowering plants. Now, the flowering plants can be divided into two distinct groups. The monocotinedonous group, or more commonly known as the monocots, recall mono quite often means one, and the second group are the dicotinedonous plants, or the dicots as they're commonly known. Again, di quite often means two. The monocots have one seed leaf, or one cotinedonon, in their seeds, Whereas the dicot plants have two cotinedons or two seed leaves in their seeds. So what are seed leaves? Cotinedons. A cotinedon is an embryonic seed leaf. Basically, it's not a true leaf. It is a leaf found in a seed or found in the embryo of the plant. So it is a leaf stored in a seed. It stores food for the seedling or young developing plant. It will feed the seedling until the seedling produces its own true leaves, which are usually green and photosynthesis can begin and then the seedling can make its own food. We see these cotyledons in peas and beans and broad beans and peanuts when you can split them open and they split into two halves. Each half is a cotinedon. So what kind of flowering plants form the monocotinedonous group? Well, grasses, daffodils, tulips, cereals like wheat and barley are all examples of monocot flowering plants. Whereas peas and beans and roses and oak trees and ash trees are all examples of 
die-cut flowering plants. So now the question is, why are the grasses, daffodils, tulips and cereals put into one group and form the group of monocots? And what do peas and beans and roses and ash trees all have in common? In other words, what are the differences between monocots and dicots? Well, let's look at the type of stems. Monocot plants usually have herbaceous stems, soft stems that die away in the winter. We see this clearly in the case of daffodils, which die away during the winter and re-emerge in the spring. Dicot plants can be both herbaceous or woody. The second difference between monocots and dicots can be seen in leaf venation. In other words, in the way that the veins are arranged in their leaves. Monocot plants usually have long, narrow leaves because they have parallel venation. The veins run parallel to each other. That would explain the long, narrow shape of grass leaves or spider plant leaves if you're familiar with those at home. Dicot plants usually have reticulate or netted venation. The veins form a network which help to support the leaf. Such leaves tend to be broad, like you would find in a beech leaf from a beech tree. The second difference between monocots and dicots lie in the way their vascular bundles are arranged. The bundles of vascular tissues are scattered in a monocot, whereas in a dicot, the vascular bundles are arranged in a ring. Remember, O for outside, O in flow, O in food. So the vascular tissue, flow tissue, is found on the outside of the vascular bundles, O in flow, O in food, so phloem tissue carries food. D for disc. A disc is a circle, a ring shaped item, and D for dicot. So the vascular bundles are arranged in the shape of a disc in a dicot stem. Another difference between monocots and dicots can be seen in their cotonedons or seed leaves. Monocotonedonous plants, for example, the maize plant or corn, we might be familiar with corn on the cob, or the corn that you have before you make your popcorn. So these popcorns are monocot seeds. They only have a single cotonedon or seed leaf, whereas dicot plants have two cotonedons or two seed leaves. As we've said, when you split a pea or a bean or a peanut into two halves, each half is a cotonedon. DI usually means two, so dicot plants have two cotonedons in their seeds. Lastly, the difference between monocots and dicots can be seen in their floral parts. Monocotonedonous plants usually have their flower parts in multiples of three. So for example, they might have three petals, one, two and three. They might have three stamens, three male parts. Dicot plants tend to have their flower parts in multiples of four or five. So they might have four petals or five petals, four stamens perhaps, or maybe five stamens. So their floral parts are in multiples of four or five. So the differences between monocot and dicot plants are. Monocot plants are usually herbaceous, are non-woody or have soft stems, whereas dicot plants can be herbaceous but they can be woody as well. Monocot plants have parallel venation in their leaves, whereas dicot plants have reticulate or netted venation. 
In monocots, the vascular bundles are scattered. In dicots, the vascular bundles are arranged in a ring. Monocot plants usually have one cotyledon or seed leaf, whereas dicot plants have two cotyledons in their seeds. Monocots have their floral parts in multiples of three, whereas dicots have their floral parts in multiples of four or five. So there you have it. Don't forget to practice in a jotter. Now that we've reached the end of our lesson, have we achieved our objective? Are you able to distinguish between dicotinedons and monocotinedons in terms of whether they are woody or herbaceous, arrangement of floral parts, arrangement of vascular bundles, cotyledon or seed leaf number?